I didn't re- I didn't really realize that I was transgender until I was 39 years of age. Deirdre O'Byrne is a Dubliner living in Longford. Deirdre has been in social transition for eight years and medical transition for seven years. With the stigma of being transgender still in existence in Ireland today, we hope Deirdre's story will humanise what it is to be transgender. I grew up in Dublin. Um, what, what it was like growing up for me, it, it was the usual. I mean, um, I, didn't re- I didn't really realise that I was transgender until I was 39 years of age. Uh, growing up, I knew that there was something about gender which wasn't making sense to me, which was, you know, gender was mysterious to me and, and, and there was something just off about it and I couldn't really put my finger on it and I didn't know what the hell was going on. And I mean, looking back at it now, it was all staring me in the face because, you know, I was cross-dressing and um, it did occur to me that I should probably um, check out the transgender community in Dublin, but I just never got the courage to do it. So it wasn't until I was 39 years of age that I eventually got that courage uh, to go out into the transgender community in Dublin. And I discovered pretty quickly that, yes, I was transgender and yes, I needed to transition. And it was it was as if somebody just turned on the lights of my life. You know, it, it was like my entire life just suddenly made sense. Uh, All the issues that I was having with gender, all the issues that I was having with relationships, my depression, my lack of a sense of a place in the world, all of those issues were all down to being transgender and not having done anything with it and about it. Well, the first thing that I did was I socialised on the transgender scene in Dublin, which was brilliant because I got to meet so many other transgender people. um, And I got to learn what it means to be transgender because I was full of you know, the the, the rubbish uh, that were fed in the media, uh, with all due respect. And then, of course, what I also found out was I found out the the steps that you take in order to to transition in Ireland. The first step, obviously, that you have to take is you have to take the step of realising that this is something that you have to do. Because, obviously, it's pretty much an irreversible thing. It's going to affect you the rest of your life. It's going to uh, cost you uh, emotionally, psychologically, socially, professionally, every which way uh, to transition. So you have to, have to, have to know that this is something that you have to do. Um, So that process for me took about six months of real soul searching, a lot of therapy. And uh, the amazing thing about it was that when I... Um, entertained the idea that I was transgender just suddenly the, the world was more colourful I understood things that I hadn't understood before um, so you know it was pretty clear to me that I did need to transition so then the next step is you have to um, you have to get a diagnosis of at the time it was called gender identity disorder which is a uh, psychiatric condition which is uh, listed in the Manual of Psychiatric uh, Conditions near pedophilia and stuff like that. But that's what you have to do. Those are the hoops that they make you jump through. Um, So I got my diagnosis. Um, Then what you do is you present yourself to the doctors, the the endocrinologists in particular. Um, I, like many transgender people, I will never forget the first day that I took uh, hormones. I, I took um, the uh, anti-androgen at about 4pm uh, on, uh, on this Tuesday and I took an estrogen at about 6pm and by 8 9pm my body was buzzing and it was as if every cell in my body was saying at last, you know, you were supposed to have this decades ago. My, my, my entire body was just buzzing. It was, it was a most extraordinary experience. Um, so then that's medical transition and you know then there are other hoops you have to jump through if you're going for surgery and but the real um, the real challenge of transition is the social transition. Learning the stuff that I should have learned when I was a teenager um, and indeed before and after that. Um, an awful lot of catching up to do, an awful lot of things and I, it was absolutely it was it was another mind-blowing thing, another eye-opening thing. 
Um, I mean, a lot of transgender women in particular will talk about the very first time that they experience sexism. Um, and I can remember that happening to me, and it, it's kind of like a rite of passage, and an unfortunate rite of passage, but one nonetheless. I was in the office, um, uh, I was on a conference call with a client, so there was myself, my boss on our end, uh, and the client uh, at the other end of the phone on, on, a, on, a, on a speakerphone. And the client had got a lot of technical questions and directed all of them to my boss, even though it would have been made perfectly clear to him that I was a person who was doing all the technical stuff. Um, so that was uh, very interesting. Social transition is a pivotal part of a transgender male or female's journey. Deirdre tells us what it truly takes to combat this. Of course, one of the things about social transition is that you have to start coming out to people. Uh, the first person I came out to, uh, it didn't go too good. I was actually quite shocked by her response uh, because I thought that she was very sort of worldly and, and, and open and this and the other. Uh, I later learned from her that uh, she had actually been involved in the transgender community about two decades before I came out to her. And at that stage, you know, there was so much uh, oppression uh, and repression uh, in the transgender community that she found it to be a, a dreadful experience. And so when I came out as being transgender, she was like, oh dear, you know, I don't want to go through all that again. Um, so I can kind of understand that. The second person I came out to was an old male friend of mine. Um, again, it didn't go too good. Um, again, I was very surprised by it. Um, but, you know, we had been kind of close. Uh, and so I think for him, and well, for him, not really for me, but for him, it, it was... You know, uh, just this, this, this. Suddenly, this person that he had been close to was not the person that he thought it was. Um. So you know, again, I can kind of understand that. Um. The third person I came out to was my dad. Um. A couple of months before I came out to him, uh, there was a film on. It was at Christmas time. There was a film on the telly, uh, Breakfast on Pluto, about a transgender uh, woman. Um, and uh, I, we didn't actually watch the film, but I, I was sitting there as he was reading the review of the film on Airtel and, a, and he let out a snicker and I was like, oh no. But anyway, I had to come out to him. Um, so I bundled myself into a bus and, you know, sort of apologising to him on my head. You know, I'm sorry that I'm going to have to ruin your day and, and this, that and the other. So. I went out and I met him in a in a in a pub in a pre-arranged place and um, you know showed him uh, some uh, photographs of my holiday my sister just as sort of a warm up uh, and then I said well I've got something to tell you and, and he says yeah what is it and he said well I'm transgender and he said all right I'm like okay he didn't understand that yeah uh, for the past couple of months I've been socialising as a female in Dublin and he's like oh I see. Um, and he, he just didn't seem to get it uh, and I was getting kind of frustrated and um, you know eventually um, in my frustration I said to him uh, uh, yes I've applied to Lachlanstown Hospital for a sex change and he was like oh well I hope you get it <laughs> I was like what <laughs> he was just amazing absolutely amazing and I can remember going home on the bus that evening and it was a case of well I went to the pub expecting to ruin your day you ruined mine because I was ready for a fight you know? um, no he's, he's, he's a super super guy he really is um, I'm so so lucky with him uh, my brother as well my eldest brother um, came out to him uh, we had a good couple of hour long conversation with him and at the end of it, you know, he was, he was about to drive me home and uh, he says to me, well, there's something that I've wanted to say for the past couple of hours and I've been kind of afraid to say it. And I was like, well, you know, go for it. And he said to me, um, I think I should meet my new sister before I've had the chance to form preconceptions. That was uh, wonderful. 
So my sister as well has been brilliant. Um, I, I think my two nieces think it's the coolest thing ever to have a transgender aunt. <laughs> the legal process of transitioning can be truly strenuous and Deirdre knows this all too well. Talking about legal transition, one of the, I mean, when you do your uh, legal, when you do your ch depot change of name, you have to tell everybody that you do business with that you've changed your name. Because once you do your depot change your name, it is uh, illegal for you to sign your name in your old name. You have to sign for, for me, Deirdre Brown, from now on. Which means that I have to tell everybody I do business with, don't give me stuff to sign in my old name, give me stuff to sign as Deirdre um, so anyway, I went to the uh, credit union. So I went in and, you know, filled out my form and that, and went up to the counter and handed it all in, and I arranged it such that she would see the depot uh, before she got to my passport. So that she would know that I was transgender before she got to the photo. Um, so she went through all the paperwork, got to the depot change of name, and gave it a good read. So I was like, okay, she now knows. Put that aside, went through some more papers, got to the passport, looked at the passport photo, looked at me, looked at the passport photo, looked at me, looked at the passport photo and said, who is this, your husband? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. <sighs> Having transitioned eight years ago, what exactly has brought Deirdre to Longford after living in Dublin her whole life? Well, I moved to Longford uh, three years ago, I think. Um, not by choice. Um, I, uh, it was a long story, I lost both my job and my apartment uh, within the space of about a week. I was actually homeless for a very short period of time and I was taken in by a friend here in Longford and, you know, because I had no job I couldn't really move back to Dublin. Um, I had to find a place to stay here which is obviously more lot, an awful lot cheaper than Dublin. Um, and I've, I've just um, to be honest, it was so hectic in Dublin, it was so intense for me, the few years that I had in Dublin transitioning, that I think the, the, the break from Dublin, coming down here, doing nothing for a while, um, has been really good for me. Um, what's it like here in Longford? Uh, I have been, uh, had bottles of water thrown at me. Um, I have, certainly have been called names or whatever. But you know, after a while, it's like, what? I mean, it's like, you're just showing yourself up when you do that. It's, it's like, yeah, I know I'm trans. Yeah, I know it's a problem for a lot of people. Whatever, you know? Um, there's nothing I can do about it. I tried for decades to not be trans. I tried for decades to live as male and the effort nearly killed me. So here I am. Deal with it. Deirdre's life is now where it always should have been. So what is next for her? And where would she like to see herself by the end of this year? What I would really love to do uh, for the, in the near future is, is I would really love to get more seriously involved in media because I absolutely love it. So there is this uh, TV studio here in Longford that I'm involved in. Uh, I've done a couple of uh, videos with them, uh, mostly around uh, the Irish music scene in around here at Longford. Um, during the marriage referendum campaign, uh, we did a, uh, I, myself and a friend did a marriage equality video thing, which also went down a storm. Um, so I just absolutely love it. I mean, I'm, I'm also picking up the old hobbies that I had from years ago. Um, computing, electronics, um, astronomy I'm going to try and get back into it as well um, you know and just uh, because tr transition has just taken over so much of my life over the past number of years that it's you know it's time now to go right okay you know check out these hobbies check out these interests do the stuff that excites you I really love to wake up one morning and kind of forget that I'm trans um, and that's happening more and more these days, um, you know, and, and just, just get on with it now. I've, I've done the transition, there's a big life out there now that I should have lived decades ago that I'm time for me to live it.